Hell, let's bring another handsome dude in, Trevor Maddich. Yeah. He is our uh, Redskins well, it's, analyst. It's radio, so nobody really knows. <laughs> uh, you sound handsome today, Trevor. How are you? Aren't we just a mutual admiration society? That's right. <laughs> All right, heading up to Philly this Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field. The three and six Redskins against the five and five Eagles. The Eagles have actually been on a roll here. Uh, let's not forget the first game of the season when the Eagles spanked the Redskins pretty well. Uh, will this be a different outcome this Sunday? Well, that's uh, going to be hard for the Redskins to pull off because they just can't stop anybody. They they give up the second most points in the league. Only the Jacksonville Jaguars ouch have given up more points than the Redskins defense this year. So, and Philly's the offense, you're right, is on a complete roll. So somehow, somewhere, the Redskins defense is going to have to find a way to drop anchor, or they'll be in another desperate shootout that'll be tough to win. Okay, but you know how it is with these interdivision games. When you come back and play a team, uh, you usually you're informed about who they are and what they can do. However, in this case, the Eagles, they have a different quarterback, don't they? They, sure they do. Michael Vick is out. Michael Vick lit him up by running the ball against him in the opener. This time it's Nick Foles, who's like 6'6 and tall and skinny. Kind of looks like Ichabod Crane with a longer neck. <laughs> and he throws the ball. And so the personality of the Eagles' defense has changed and that they throw it more. But for people who think that this is different from the Chip Kelly offense, keep this in mind that, that Nick Foles ran a spread offense at Arizona when he was there. It was just more pass-oriented, so this is normal for him. This isn't like Peyton Manning is forced into a running offense. This is, this is a, a very comfortable thing for Foles and an easy transition for Coach Chip Kelly. So the Redskins can't stop the pass. Last, last week against Minnesota, they faced two quarterbacks that were benched a couple of weeks ago for a guy they signed off the street. And there was, you know, Matt Castle and Christian Ponder. And those two guys lit him up. And so uh, Nick Foles, as hot as he is, I think RG3 and the offense have to expect that they'll have to score mm -hmm. early and often just to keep up. Yeah, and okay, and that hasn't been the strong suit of the Redskins this year. Well, they, they, they've done better, though. Yeah, and, they, they know, are. I, I've, been, I've been very critical of a lot of things, and I think the offense should be better than it's been. But they're rounding into form right now. They're in the top five in total yards per game. So they need to finish drives better. They need to take advantage of opportunities better. But th they've been getting to a point where it's going to look very similar to last year in terms of offensive production. All right. Look, you know, when you have a Thursday night game like we had last time, it's always tough because you have a short time to prepare. But, but the, the, after the Thursday, you've got a little longer to prepare. Now, what are they using that time to do? What are they, what are they focusing on? You know, I think you just focus on fundamentals. And on the defensive side of the ball, that means go back to training camp, go back to technique. <laughs> defensive football is mostly stand in the right place, look at the right guy. And when you don't do that, you end up giving up a lot of big plays. And the Redskins' problem has been they, they haven't done that enough. And so they've used that, I think, to just go back to fundamentals and to kind of reset mentally because there's been a lot of negative for the Redskins this year, and it's good just to sort of get your head out of the routine for a couple of days and kind of reset. Trevor Manish, last uh, when we spoke with you uh, last week after the humiliating loss to the lowly the humiliating Vikings. Humiliating loss to the lowly Vikings. You heard Larry. me. Yes. Uh, wow. You you were seriously questioning whether head coach Mike Shanahan would be able to uh, uh, successfully finish his contract and get re-upped. Has there been any? You know, you know how this happens. As soon as you and I, I've heard other sports uh, writers talking about this, start questioning whether the head coach has the confidence of the owner. Then that starts gurgling around the uh, locker room. It practice and the press are constantly talking about it uh is that phenomenon happening here and has snyder said anything well i haven't heard snyder say anything publicly but i also have not seen him do anything the thing is next year is the last year of of shanahan's five-year contract and almost always a, a head coach in the nfl will not go into that last year because then he loses leverage with the players the players don't know if he'll be around plus you've got a head coach that will be making personnel decisions that a future head coach will have to live with if you keep him around in that last year and then don't re-sign him after that. Yeah. So, so the fact that Snyder hasn't done anything yet tells me that he may still be waiting to see how the Redskins finish out this season. But keep this in mind, that the Redskins will have probably about $20 million in salary cap space next year. They'll be able to sign a good number of high-profile free agents, so of quality free agents next year. But if they have Shanahan sign those guys and then get rid of them, 
Uh, well, the new coach is stuck with them. Well, but but Trevor, really, the 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 underlying story here is the the little war between RG three and his head coach Mike Shanahan. This is this happened during preseason when RG three said, "I'm on my schedule," and uh, Shanahan came out and said, "Hold on a minute, we'll tell you when you're ready to go." And it seems like every week, if they win, then everything's fine. But if they lose, there's this little tug of war going on. Who's going to win that tug of war? Well, the, the RG three will win that tug of war. I mean, they gave up. They traded three first-round and one high second-round draft choice to get RG3. So they've mortgaged the future for him. And if it comes down to a, it's my way or the highway, the, the, the my way will be RG3. How about and that? Yeah. He doesn't want to get hit as much, and he said so publicly. And, and I understand that. The thing is, the play calling is not what's getting him hit. What's getting him hit is, is he's not sliding enough. Now, he's got great physical courage. But last week against Minnesota on the Comcast Sportsnet uh, palace out there in Bethesda as we were charting the game, getting ready for the post-game show. We kept on looking at each other, saying, for goodness sake, why in the world didn't he slide there? Why did he take that hit? And on some third downs and, and scoring potential plays, you can see why he'd throw his body in there. But RG3 has a lot to say about whether or not he gets hit on many plays. Um, now, the play calling, again, needs to help him, and I don't know that he isn't trying to force the right. coach into making him a pocket passer and not rolling him out, but right now, when he's in the pocket, he's getting crushed. He's got to be a mobile quarterback in order to not get hit. Trevor Maddich, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you on Monday. Uh, all right, guys. Hey, enjoy talking to Newt, man. I'm looking forward to listening to All that. right. Thank you very much, Trevor Maddich, everyone. I, mean, I bet he enjoyed hearing from you, Trevor. Uh, of course he did. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs>